Hi, I'm Bubsa Frank Jude, welcoming you to the inaugural episode introducing my new podcast, Pupsa's Dharma Lounge. Think of this as a place and a time to just kick back and relax as we explore all things Dharma. You can expect philosophy, practice, dialogue, and maybe even some debate. It's just what the world needs. Another podcast. Hi. Again, welcome to Bupsa's Dharma Lounge. My name is actually Frank Jude. And Bupsa is the Korean term for Dharma teacher. So it's a title, a position, or a role. And I was ordained a Bupsa, or a Dharma teacher, by Zen master Samu Sunim on July 4th, 2007, at the Toronto Zen Buddhist Temple. And funny enough, when I took precepts with Sunim seven years earlier, in 2000, he also gave me Bupsa as my Dharma name. So technically, I can be called Bupsa Bupsa, but that always makes me think of a certain pizza chain's motto. So just Bups is fine. The word Dharma comes from the Sanskrit root dur, which means that which sustains, supports, nurtures, upholds. And it can also refer to reality as it's ultimately reality that sustains us. Um, it's also used for virtue and, and many other um, concepts that are related. It's also used within Buddhist teachings as a term that simply means phenomena, as in all dharmas are empty, which we'll talk about at some point, I'm sure. The word lounge means to move in a relaxed way, and it also refers to a place that we can relax at informally, like a cocktail lounge or a really wonderful dive bar. So Dharma Lounge offers a relaxed space to join with others virtually in order to informally study Buddhist teachings and practices in order to discover for yourself what sustains and aligns you with your deepest core values. Now, there are a shitload of podcasts about Buddhism out there. Um, when I was researching, I saw some titles like, What is Buddhism? How to Become a Buddhist? Buddhism 101, How I Became a Buddhist, Life Lessons from Buddhism, and perhaps my favorite, I'm a Buddhist priest, ask me anything. <laughs> really, I, I am not kidding you about that last one. Apparently, there are hundreds if not thousands of them, so you might question, and rightfully so, does the world really need another Buddhist podcast? And to which that question I would respond, that the world certainly doesn't need another Buddhist podcast. Hell, it doesn't really need any Buddhist podcasts. And as I often tell people, it certainly does not need any more Buddhists. What the world is in desperate need of are more Buddhas. And Buddha simply just means someone who is awake. And that's what this podcast is going to be about, mostly. Now, as a podcast about Buddhism and Buddhist practice, there's going to be some overlap with many of those other podcasts, you know, talking about the Four Noble Truths, things like that. But however, one thing that will tend to be different about this podcast, frankly, and the pun is only semi-intended, is that I will not be telling you that what I am offering is exactly what the Buddha taught. Now, if all other teachers out there were rigorously intellectually honest, they would have to tell you that too. Because simply put, we do not know what the Buddha taught with any real 100% certainty. No one does, right? There were no audio or film recordings of the Buddha teaching. And he didn't write any books. In fact, the very earliest written records we do have come from centuries after the Buddha's death. Now, there are some traditionalists, especially those in the Theravadan school, who might argue that the earliest texts found in the Pali Canon, which are just texts written in the Pali script, are what the Buddha taught. But even in their own texts, it's recorded that right after the Buddha died, there were already monks who chose not to accept the versions of the recollections 
of what the Buddha was alleged to have taught that made it into the Pali Canon. So this tells us that there were competing interpretations of Buddha Dharma, or the Buddha's teachings, even while the man still lived. And in fact, in recent decades, texts from in other languages, some of which even predated the Pali texts, have been discovered. So this shows a diversity of thought regarding what the Buddha taught. The fact is, the original, authentic teachings of the Buddha, original Buddhism, died when the Buddha died. And what we have today are various interpretations made by others, and that's the honest to Buddha situation. Now, while traditionalists might tell you that they have the truth and that other sects offer simply distortions, and secular Buddhists tend to argue that what they offer is free of the cultural baggage that has accumulated since the Buddha. So they sometimes say that they're teaching uh, something closer to original Buddhism. Frankly, this is bullshit in the philosophical meaning of the word. I am telling you now up front that what I am going to be offering in Bubsa's Dharma Lounge is not necessarily what the Buddha taught. It's my interpretation based upon my reading, my study, and my practice over 45 years. It's informed by my experience with the various cultural forms of Zen practice from China, Vietnam, Korea, and Japan, as well as time that I spent with various Theravada and even some Tibetan Buddhist teachers. And it is equally informed by Western traditions of philosophy and science with a heaping dose of skepticism. This means that the approach to Zen practice and teachings that I will be offering is something that I call Zen naturalism, which is purely a naturalistic perspective on the various Buddhist teachings and practices. I base my understanding upon texts from various Buddhist traditions, including the Pali, but also the Sanskrit, the Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, Korean, and to a lesser extent, Tibetan traditions. I'm also saying that I do not think Buddhism is sufficient, as many traditionalists and even some secularists seem to think. I believe we need to bring in what we have learned from other wisdom traditions, including the Western Enlightenment and its values. Values such as human rights, equality, liberty, fraternity. We need to bring in contemporary thinking about race, sex, gender, ethnicity, and class. We have to use rationality, skepticism, and importantly, critical thinking. And this includes science, physics, biology, chemistry, and neuro and cognitive science. I would like Dharma Lounge to open inquiry into what Glenn Wallace calls the great feast of knowledge. And I invite you to join me. In most episodes, I'll be offering a teaching around a particular theme from philosophy, history, or practice. And many of these will be very short, maybe 10, 15 minutes. In some episodes, I'll invite others for interviews and for conversations, and they will run longer. And once in a random while, I hope to offer what I call Dharma Salon, where I will invite two or three other teachers and practitioners to offer their views and where we might be able to get down to the nitty-gritty and perhaps even spark some debate. I'm offering this podcast as another venue for sharing something that has been a lifelong interest and a central factor in my life for over 45 years. I wish to avoid ever overtly monetizing this by refusing to accept ads. I offer Donna Lounge as an act of Donna, which is a beautiful, gift-based, anti-capitalist economic system of sharing as a kind of, again, gift-based economy. This is something that the Buddha followed when offering his teachings, and this will be the topic of the next episode of Bups's Dharma Lounge. Till then, may you stay well. Thank you.